G'day, by Eddie Cairns, Vaping Bogan, back again for another Ridgy Did Review. Hope you're all doing tip fucking top. We've got something a little different for review today. It's, uh, it's this. Not, not the, the whole thing, obviously. Uh, this bit on top here. <laughs> this Proteus Neo from uh, Aspire. It is a, uh, a shisha, an e-shisha or a hookah. Uh, not to be confused with uh, the ladies of the night, uh, hooker, hit, ho hooker, whatever you want to call it, shisha. Anyway, it's this bit here. Obviously, you will need uh, a shisha uh, unit to, to run it, um, but uh, it'll fit onto any, pretty much any of your standard shisha things. Where do I put, I don't know where to put it so I can be on camera, because it'll just sit here on my lap like fucking Father Christmas. Uh, <laughs> so, so you got this thing here. Basically consists of a 5700 milliamp hour battery. That's right, 5700 ma, uh, which is pretty crazy. And this, I think, 25 mil tank, uh, obviously with a, a big sort of sub ohm coil in there. There's an airflow control on top and uh, USB C charging there. And you basically just plonk that on top of your, your shisha. It's got a couple of different rubber connection points, so it should fit pretty much all of them. And uh, it is an electronic shisha, which is uh, which is a, a, an interesting thing, something a little different. I'm not a huge shisha uh, smoker myself, but I have partaken uh, quite a few times uh, over the years, and you know it's real nice. It's very smooth shisha compared to you know smoking cigarettes or, or things like that. But uh, it's despite what some people think, extremely bad for you. <laughs> like the the smoke that comes off a of shisha is just really carcinogenic. There's just a lot of burnt sugar, basically. It's tobacco with lots of molasses sugar uh, in it, and it's it's just burning all of that. So it might feel quite smooth compared to uh, a cigarette, uh, but it actually is really not good for you. And it's actually quite a big contributor to greenhouse emissions, I found out recently. Obviously in the Middle East, it's extremely popular, and there's just some huge amount of shisha being smoked every day uh, in the uh, the Middle East, and that is actually contributing quite a bit to uh, to the fucking emissions, uh, which is something I didn't know. So it's just, it's not a good thing, the old shisha. Uh, but this, obviously, we know is a, uh, a much healthier alternative, a bit of harm reduction uh, for, uh, yeah, maybe not something so popular in Western culture, but very, very popular, uh, particularly in uh, the Middle East. So uh, let's have a little fucking toot. It's a 0.17 ohm uh, sort of sub-ohm coil, and uh, it is just inhale activated. There's no wattage adjustment as such. So um, yeah, you got water in the, the bottom here, and... Uh Little light comes on to tell you that it's working. And it has very much the same sensation as a, a, a real shisha. You get that bubbly water um, sort of filtered uh, vapor, uh, and you get you know the same sort of experience as you'd get from uh, the real thing, just much less fucking carcinogens. It's pretty tasty, and as I said, it really does mimic the sensation of, uh, of shisha uh, quite quite well. Uh, we're going to dive down in the up and close in a second. I'm going to show you. It's pretty simple. It probably won't take us very long. It's pretty simple, the actual device, um, and uh, then we'll do the pros and cons. But before we can get to any of that, as always, we're going to have a fucking beer. Got one from a mob I haven't had before, T-Bone Brewing. This one is called Juicy Illusion, and it's an IPA. Doesn't really tell me much about the beer on the back here. Uh, brewed and canned over by T-Bone Brewing. They are down in uh, Tasmania, Huntingfield, Tasmania. Bit of a fucking uh, tazzy beer. Uh, this one comes in at, uh, what have we got here? It is 7.7%. Uh, let's just see how this little Tasmanian tastes. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink it here. Well, there we go. Fairly clear complexion on this one. Nice healthy head there. Smells good. Smells hoppy. Fucking cheers. That's pretty decent. 
yeah, got a West Coast sort of uh, IPA kind of feel. Crisp, hoppy, citrusy, with a, yeah, kind of a slightly sweet malt finish. That's gone down nicely though. Yeah, sort of citrusy, hoppy at the start, as you'd expect, got that piney West Coast resinous sort of uh, flavour. And then there's, yeah, something a little bit sweet about the malt finish on the end there. There's just a little hint of sweetness. Not bad, Tasmania. Let's fucking pair it up with a liquid. Now, I really wanted to see how the flavour was affected by uh, such a uh, large apparatus, given that it is kind of passing through water and long tubes and everything else in a shisha. So I went for a liquid that I know very fucking well, and that is the Rituals Dragon Passion from their salt water taffy line. You can't know how much I absolutely love this liquid. It's got the uh, the tangy passion fruit and the uh, the li delicious uh, tropical dragon fruit flavors. It's sort of sweet and candy-like, being that a uh, salt water taffy uh, line. And uh, it should go well. It usually goes nicely, passion fruit and uh, sort of IPAs. Let's fucking see. And once again, nicely paired there. Yeah, the uh, the passion fruit, beautiful with that uh, crisp citrusy hop flavor, and uh, yeah, dragon fruit bringing in a bit more of a tropical kind of feel. Very decent. Yeah, the uh, the tropical element I think of the liquid it's bringing in a nice sort of fruitiness to the uh, the beer pairing nicely. Warm weather little combo that crisp refreshing IPA with a tropical fucking liquid. Anyway, enough waffling over the uh, bloody hops. Let's get down the up and close. Talk about this thing and uh, show you how it works. It's very simple as I said. Won't take us long. And then we'll jump back up and wrap it up. Let's have a sticky bake. All fucking righty then. This is the packaging. Your Proteus Neo it will come in. It's a big box. Doesn't really fit on the camera, but uh, the side here will give you a few stats on it. 5700 milliamp hours, 25 mils, uh, max 80 watt output. Again, you don't really adjust that. Um, it's sort of uh, based on the resistance of the coil. Uh, and I uh, can't show you the back because websites and all the usual stuff thanks to YouTube. So uh, let's just get into it. Inside the box, you'll find the device itself, a coil, an alternative bottom plug, USB-C charging cable, and a user manual. But let's get into it. So, here it is. It is uh, pretty big. It's quite a chunky bit. Obviously, you're not going to be putting this in your pocket, so size isn't really a factor. It does come in a bunch of different colors. This is the red one. Uh, I think there's green and blue, maybe white, black. Uh, I'll have to double check, but uh, yeah, it comes in a few colors if you want to match it up to your shisha, kind of like I did with the uh, red on red. Uh, now at the top here, you've got the uh, the tank as such. So you've got the airflow coming through here. Okay, so this is where you're going to be sort of drawing air through uh, and you've got a little adjustment there for airflow. Uh, wide open, as you can see, it's two large kidney holes. So it is about as airy as you can get, you know, it's basically like breathing uh, when it's sort of wide open, very much the same as you would get on a, a proper shisha, uh, but you can close that down to your liking. Uh, and it will sort of be easier to activate the inhalation uh, draw uh, with the airflow closed off more. You sort of uh, require less uh, in, you know, inhaling to get it to activate. Um, so obviously the pressure is a little bit higher with uh, less airflow. Filling it, pretty simple. Your little plug here, I'm not going to open it up because I've got liquid in there at the moment, uh, but it holds 25 millilitres of liquid. Uh, so a fair bit, you can see it sort of sloshing around in there. They have designed the tank itself. Uh, you probably won't be able to see it, but uh, it runs on an angle. The coil sits in the middle here and the, uh, the tank is sort of uh, sloped. Uh, like a funnel. So it funnels the liquid into the center where the coil is. You don't have to have the thing completely full to be sort of up above the uh, coil cotton lines. Uh, it will run in there and the coil sitting kind of lower than uh, the top of the edge of the tank. Uh, around to the base, that is the, the coil itself. So I'm not going to again pull the coil out now, but you just pop that out. It's much like a, a normal sort of sub-ohm tank coil. 
except it's got a large flat disc on it. So yeah, much like your regular sub-ohm tanks, you've got a mesh coil in there. Just this big flat base here obviously is the connection point to the uh, the power unit. Uh, as you would with any sub-ohm tank, make sure that you prime the coil properly. So saturate all these little cotton inlets, put some liquid down the center there and roll it around, make sure you get it all saturated and uh, then let it sit around for a good five to 10 minutes to properly soak into the cotton. As I said, it is a 0.17 ohm. Don't know if they do any other resistances currently uh, or whether it's just the uh, the 0.17. You get just one coil in the box, which is a bit disappointing. I think they should, as always with any vapor product that uses pre-made coils, include at least fucking two. So you've got a backup, but yeah, that's the coil. That goes in there, and uh, then that just sits in the uh, the power unit. It's got a couple of connection points there. It doesn't matter which way you put it on. The, the ring from your coil is going to make uh, a connection, and uh, you're good to go. You got a little Aspire logo here, which has an LED in it, so that will glow. Um, you're telling you that you're inhaling and that it's working. So when you've got a green light, as we do now, we've got 60 to 100% battery. When you're on blue, you've got 30 to 60. And when that uh, ring goes red, you are looking at uh, between zero and 30%. And that's about it, really. USB-C port there for charging it. Uh, there's really not uh, a whole lot more to explain here. There's no uh, variable power. It is just based off of uh, the wattage on the coil. And as you inhale, it activates the power. Down the bottom here, you do have your connection point. So this is what connects to the top of your Shisha unit. You've got two of these plugs. So if this one here doesn't fit, it's a bit of a wider connection point uh, on the spare one. So if this is too loose or too tight, should I say, you can put this one on here if you've got a wider connection on your Shisha. Uh, but this one here, the narrow one, has worked perfectly on mine. Um, but that really is about it for the uh, the unit. Obviously a big part of its size would be the 5700 milliamp hour battery, which uh, which is good if you're gonna be sitting around sharing it with your friends like you would a normal Shisha, having a large battery and a large tank is uh, you know pretty much going to be needed. So with that dickheads, uh, let's fucking jump back up top and talk some pros, cons, prices, and everything fucking else. So there you go, dickheads, the Proteus Neo. Pretty simple little setup, really. It's a fucking giant sub-ohm tank with an inhale activation system uh, mod. Basically, that's sort of what they've got going on here. I'm sure there's a little bit more to it than that, but that's basically what it is. Uh, so let's get into the pros and cons. What do I like? What do I fucking dislike? Now, obviously, this is a quite niche product. I'm sure there's plenty of you out there that watch my videos regularly and think, that, but this isn't, this isn't the stuff that I fucking buy in Bogan. Um, and maybe not, but I'm sure there's a few of you that do like to have a suck on a hooker. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, so in terms of replicating the experience of a Shisha, it's certainly doing a pretty good job. Uh, as I said, I'm not a big Shisha user. Uh, Aspire were kind enough to uh, to pay for me to buy a Shisha so I could use this because I didn't have one. But I have used them a fair bit, uh, you know, when I was younger and the, you know the novelty of let's go have a fucking Shisha. Um, so I know what it, what what they're meant to you know uh, be like, and it's it's pretty it's pretty close. It has a much cooler vape experience than you would get from a sub ohm tank. Um, the temperature because your your vapor is going through the water just like a, a, the smoke goes through a Shisha and it cools it down. Down. It's much cooler. You know, they say this thing runs at 80 watts or so, uh, and this doesn't feel like a sub ohm tank at 80 watts temperature wise. It's much, much cooler. In fact, it feels quite cool. The vapor is cooling as it sort of comes into your mouth. So uh, yeah, it, it feels like a shisha. Flavor-wise, it's pretty good. Now, I was concerned that it would lose flavor traveling you know, down a, a long fucking shisha system and through the water and then down your, your hose and everything else. And you may get better flavor from a smaller shisha. The one that I've got here is, is a, it's, a, it's a big hooker. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> so many puns. It might be a little bit different with a smaller device. Obviously, you don't need to have this fucking, you know, giant, long top piece to, to make it function. You could have a much smaller uh, shisha unit and you probably would boost the flavor. Um, the flavor, I will say, maybe not as good as you get from a sub-ohm tank, but it certainly has that that shisha feeling and that's what I think they're trying to do here is replicate that experience. So the flavor is decent, it's pretty good. It's not amazing, but it's still quite tasty, quite flavorsome, uh, and obviously the temperature, if you don't like hot vapor, but you'd like a large amount of it, uh, that's gonna give it to you. It's gonna give you plenty of vapor. There's no no denying the amount of vapor that comes out. Uh, it's very easy to use. It's definitely a pro. It's easy to set up. It, it is quite literally uh, either changing out or using the existing little rubber grommet in there and then just plonking it on your shisha and filling it up. Uh, obviously, you'd prime it just like a sub tank. Again, very easy to set up, very easy to fill. There's no functions to figure out. It's literally just plug and play. Adjustable airflow, that's gotta be a pro ski. You can dial that into your uh, own liking. A huge 5,700 milliamp hour battery. I haven't fucking charged this thing since I've been using it. It, it just, it fucking, yeah. It's got a lot of power there, a uh, lot of battery power. And a big capacity, 25 milliliters. I don't know, I'm just doing a lot of this <laughs> today. <laughs> 25 milliliters of liquid uh, is definitely gonna keep you going for a good fucking while. So yeah, I mean, I don't have any other uh, electronic uh, shisha systems to compare it to, but for the first one that I've tried, I mean, I've tried a few at some of the expos, um, and this one I think, easily you know up there with you know probably the best performing that i've had um there's not a heap of them on the market i've had a couple of others some of them um not quite so cloudy didn't quite give the the cloudy experience that i get from this one so this seems to be sort of pumping out the vapor quite nicely so um just from using other ones but i haven't had a, a proper time with them i'd say this is it's pretty good. It's pretty fucking good. Uh, so cons, what could I complain about? Um, probably the only thing that did uh, annoy me when I was using this is the first coil that I had in here. I set it up, I vaped, it was all good. And then I let it sit around for probably a week. I didn't use it for a week or so. And it leaked. It leaked pretty much all of the liquid. I didn't fill it up completely. So maybe that was part of the fact that I didn't fill the tank completely. I didn't create a vacuum as the liquid left because there was obviously air already in the tank. Um, I only half filled it. So that could be a factor, probably a factor, I would say. Because um, when you fill something up, obviously there's no air in there and then you vape some of it, it creates a vacuum. So it kind of holds the liquid in. But anyway, it leaked. Uh, and obviously there was a bit of a mess, uh, and then I didn't realize that it leaked everything out of it, and I vaped it, and then I burnt the coil. And you only get one in the box, and that is fucking dumb. You should always include at least two coils with any pre-made coil system, whether it's a pod or a sub-tank or a fucking electronic shisha. Always you need a couple of coils. So that would be um, the, uh, the only real con that I have there is uh, it did give me a bit of a leak and then the coil burnt and you only get one. Apart from that, I don't really have anything else to fucking whinge about. I think it's replicating the experience of a shisha pretty fucking well. So uh, what are they gonna cost you? Well, they're about 65 bucks US. I can't put links in the description or tell you where to get them, but I did a bit of a Google and yeah, 65 bucks US is uh, the price that I've seen them. and. That seems pretty reasonable for something that's, you know, pretty unique, you know? And uh, obviously there's a fair bit of battery in there as well. So uh, not bad for uh, 5,700 milliamp hours worth of lithium, 65 fucking bucks. Uh, so yeah, if it's something that you partake in or uh, do enjoy the old shisha, but uh, obviously want something a little bit less harmful, then uh, certainly worth having a look at. But yeah, just something different, something a bit more unique, something uh, that's not a fucking pod uh, and not a boro, if you are bored of the amount of boro stuff we're reviewing these days. So uh, yeah, do with that fucking what you will. Uh, I've always liked to have a bit more of a spread of things to review rather than just the same old, same old. And uh, 
That definitely ain't the same old, same old. So with that, dickheads, I'm going to fuck off. I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to see what this Muppet gets up to outside the YouTube videos. If you want to support the channel, please do. As always, hit the like, hit the subscribe button on your way out. Helps us out, us YouTubers, because uh, fucking YouTube ain't great for the vape reviewers with the algorithms. But if you really want to keep me behind the lens and think about hitting some of my support links, as I say every video, this is an independent channel, which means I don't get paid to do reviews. Nobody's doing any sponsorships here. There's no sneaky jumping the queue fees. Uh, I want to make sure I can give you a truly unbiased opinion on the shit I'm talking about, but to keep it that way, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. Hit my Patreon page, a special content, do a vlog on there once a week you won't see here on YouTube. I actually use this for the first time with the Patreons, uh, and you get access to my little uh, you know, Patreon community on Facebook and Zoom, uh, because those fuckers keep me behind the lens, so a big cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub home your fucking dicks off, all your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you're vaping on, whether it's a big fucking audacious electronic shisha, or something a bit more compact like a pod. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh.